Good morning, guys. Um, our topic for today is problem identification. Uh, firstly, I'm going to throw a question. Why do we need to have a research problem? What is the importance of research problem? Okay. So, per more tool, per se, it says that all research is set in motion by the existence of a problem. So, there should be a problem. Existence of a problem. A problem is perceived difficulty. A feeling of discomfort or the way that things are. And this is noted as discrepancy between what someone believes should be and what is um what someone believes should be but the result is different so meaning to say that would be this something leads to a gap diba you're trying to expect or you believe that this would be the result, but the other end was provided as a result. What is? That's in the new. Well, the problems are the initiating force behind research. Not all problems require research. A potential research situation arises when three conditions exist. First, a perceived discrepancy between what is and what should be. So there should be a differences between what you identify what is and what you have identified what should be. Second one, a question, question about why the discrepancy exists. Why this discrepancy exists? So that's, that, that's the question. Number three, or next, is we have at least two possible or reasonable answers to the question. So there is two possible or reasonable, possible or reasonable answer to the question. So there should be a feasibility. There should be a viability. There should be a, what else? What is synonymous for feasibility? When can we say that a problem really exists? A problem really exists when there is an absence of information resulting in a gap in knowledge. If there is a gap, there would be something that is puzzling. Bakit meron tong gap na to? So meaning to say, from it, you could derive a problem. When there is contradictory results, yes, because as mentioned earlier, there would be a discrepancy between what is and what should be. When the fact exists and we intend to make our study explains it. So if there is such a gap and there is some theory that could be able to explain it or there is facts that could be able to explain it, then the study would be feasible. Or let's say the study would be possible. Traditional e-research. Okay, let's move. What characterized what characterized good problem? First a good problem should be of interest of the researcher. Of course, it should be within your interest, within your bound of interest. Why? Kung hindi mo to interest or outside your interest, meaning to say, wala ito sa attention mo, wala ito sa priority mo, Wala ito sa gusto mong mangyari. At wala kang curiosity doon. 
Meaning to say, um, if you're not interested, then, hmm, ano ba? Okay, so something that should be within your kin interest. Because with that kind of interest, dun, dun mo, dun ka magsa-start, dun ka magsa-start. Something that interesting, okay, dun ka motivate. Uh, kumuha ng reason why you wanted that problem to be solved. Okay? So, next we have, it should be useful for the concerned people in a particular field. Meaning to say, the problem should be uh, the 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 solution for the problem or the problem itself, there should be someone that is to be useful for the concerned people. Meaning to say, someone is concerned, someone is within, or that something is existing because some people are using it, or some people exist in there, or some people are really in that situation. Okay? Since, if, for example, if you're going to develop a system, Meaning to say, somebody would be using it or somebody is is involved in using it. Kasi parang wala lang. Uh, if you're going to do some research and wala kang variable or wala kang subject, meaning to say, it is not feasible. It is not existing. It is not viable. So, next we have a research or a research Problem should be novel. Research problem should be novel. So, um, but on our previous lesson, okay, child, going to doesn't necessarily uh, says that that your research would be new. So, for as long as that it is existing and you could add another knowledge, another body of knowledge to it. Pwede na yun. So, you could be able to have, or you could be able to provide new ideas, new techniques, or new concepts, or new solutions. So, that makes your research, or, yeah, your research novel. So, sabihin na natin existing, but, Something may existing or something that is very new. But the bottom line here is that you're going to add new knowledge. Fourth one, it, it should lead, it should lend itself to complex design. It should lend itself to complex designing. Yes, there is planning. There is intense um, planning, um, conceptualization, because you're going to use or get your, out of the problem, you're going to provide a solution. Next we have is it should be completed in an allotted time desire. So um, this should be within the time frame. Remember the SMART? Smart, but it's smart again. Okay, go to T. Okay, time bound. So, research has, has this kind of time frame. Okay, um, research has, has this kind of projected time to finish and to start, time to complete. So, Gantt charts are, you can be able to find um, Gantt chart templates online. So it's really up to you and how are you going to uh, devise it or design it. So here is an example of a Gantt chart. For example, in stage of planning or doing your chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, and so on, you have their specific time frame or time period. So in which 
And for example, in developmental for your capstone one, if you're or capstone two, if you're going to develop, there is a specific time frame why in capstone two, you are expected that at the end of the semester, you have to finish it. In reality, in creating research, there is a reasonable, reasonable time frame. Okay? So you have to deal with it. You have to. You have to. Wait, I have a text here from Bro. Okay, so let's move on. Okay, so defining research problem. Research should see to it that major concepts are clearly defined. Major concepts are clearly defined. The concept must must be such that they can be re re represented. The concept must be such that they can be represented by some evidences, which can be obtained through direct or indirect activity, which are feasible towards carrying out such observation. So, um, here, you're going to limit the scope of the study in terms of the following. Issue and concerns. Okay? Issue and concerns. You have to clearly define your boundaries, your coverage, area of coverage, the subject and respondents as well. The period of time, as mentioned earlier, the timeliness, the period that you have to finish this up to this particular time. A type of data, whether in research subject, in this research, uh, you are expected to provide a concept paper. So it could be qualitative or quantitative or combined. But ang pag napag usapan natin, it should be like, this could be your concept paper that that you will be using for capstone one. So, ang tinatarget natin dito is the uh, capstone one. If it will be approved for capstone one, then it will be proceed. It will proceed to capstone two, which is which has developmental. So, your research should be the concept that you will be doing should be with or towards developmental okay justifying the research problem the next task of the researcher is to justify why he selected it why did you select the particular research problem over other problems bakit itong pinili mo over the over the listed problems again the question there uh, siguro um in conceptualizing title you have to provide three titles no so you have to put the first initial or the first one that which is your group intends to uh, consens consensusly uh, agree on the first topic okay my meaning to say as we go back here justify why the researcher selected it over probable ones so you have for example you have uh, five interest and sabi ko gawa kayo ng title from one title one title two and title three okay malamang sa malamang the first one is your uh you pick the first one because it is within your range of interest. Okay? If the researcher, if the researcher is to conduct a study for funding by a private, okay, take note of this funding by a private or government institution, he must convince the approving committee about the important contribution of such a study to the field of knowledge. Okay, if you are trying to uh, to use this study in a particular organization or in business, you have to tell them the purpose of it. And malaymo, they will be funding or provide you fundings for this. They will be supporting you because eventually they will be what? They will be your end user. 
Okay, they will be patronizing what you have developed. Important contribution of such study to the field of knowledge. And first thing, magpapaalam tayo dun sa targeted natin na offices. Why? We are going to get contribution from them. We're going to get a um, insights from them. We need their protocols, their rules, okay, their SOPs. Okay, to continue, to the trust of the funding, the funding institute and to the welfare and the development of the society in general. In particular, in general, because it pertains to the end user. Okay, and with, for example, for the business, for the end user, the owner, the community it serves, and a lot more. Okay, in general, as mentioned here. The following are the guide questions in presenting the research justification for his particular study. First, the problem 